Right, what's the order? It goes. It goes there, then there. That one goes out. Then actually, this central one here goes out or goes down. Imogen and Mia are over there, so everybody is where they are, but the lights are just a bit down on them. Okay, we're going to do our one, two, three, go, and then just go be quiet in your place. You've got about a minute to just stand there and get into your focused head, and then I'll let you do the same. Ready? Last one. We love the answer. Stripped with yourselves and go back to the words all the time, yeah, yeah. Um, in a way, and say, actually, this is what they said. So that's where the verbatim stuff comes in, doesn't it? Mm. Because actually, so it's, it may not be so much that you've made it up, but actually, it's what you've heard. You actually hear the stories about the doors opening itself, and there's nobody there. You know, something scurrying or things like that. It might be a myth. <laughs> it might be something about some piece of true in it. So you never know. It's unexplainable. So with any religion, they believe life after death because no one will know about it, because no one has experienced it to have a belief in it. Something is to know about it, oh, because to have a belief in something is to know about it. It's hard to imagine that you're here, living, you know? A living person in yourself. And it's all just gonna finish, you know? And then we all go to sleep at night, but we dream, don't we? Um, just to start by listing images that you maybe have brought with you, or images that you associate with death um, and the afterlife, that kind of idea, any sort of images. And then I was going to give you, in your groups, these kind of set of tasks to do that we kind of keep returning to and reworking. So I haven't got them for everyone, but if you... So it's going to work in the groups, if you make sure that you've got sight of one. In the 60s, there's some young man or woman, or older man or woman, who's kind of dreaming this estate. And now there's someone who's dreaming this regeneration. And that those two might also be characters that we have, slightly outside the drama in some way, who, are, who have this kind of almost abstract idea in their head about how people live. And then in the middle, we've got how people they really live. Mm -hmm. oh, and they're sort of on either side of those, are these two Architect, really. We just got chatting one day when she was just a little thing and I was working in the flower beds. She wanted to know the names of the flowers, bless her, curious, like they are at that age. Now she often helps me plant new things in the garden. I better get a move on, it'll be getting busy around here pretty soon with the kids going to school. Might catch Joe rushing about doing the school run. She seems to look after half the neighbourhood's kids, as well as her own. I honestly don't know how she manages, but she's an excellent with those boys. And then two things that you thought. Well, you're in, in a sentence of your own, so using I, so or whatever, just write two sentences of your own. It doesn't really matter if we get this wrong. Mistakes are where we're at in devising. Like they, had a, they had an opportunity to kind of protest. Um, and it was nice that it was done through music, because you know, some, some of the songs that were also playing after people, like, so somebody would talk about something in protest, and then like, Lay Lady Lay by Bob Dylan will come on, or Buffalo Soldier by Bob Marley yeah. come on, and it's like, well, that's, that's really relevant to the protest they've just had. So. I think that's really interesting. The songs, they have their own power, don't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got to think about that quite carefully because that's really relevant to the radio station that Spare Tire were creating. But obviously, we're creating something a bit different. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> you want uh, one on each, you want four. Yeah, so you've got four different bits of paper, but that's fine, just rip them. Okay. Joe and Maria go for coffee. Maria wants to go to a more expensive restaurant, but Joe persuades to go to 60 plus cafe because it's cheaper. So it's Maria and Joe in the, co in the um, cafe. Maria talks to Joe about feeling lonely and wanting a partner, but Joe is envious of Maria's freedom to do whatever she wants. We hear about Joe's lack of money 
and babysitting a lot, how she loves her husband and family, but has dreams of doing things for herself. We should get an idea of Maria's tendency to exaggerate. And then we also have other people eating their lunch in various places. So we might have other little moments that we, that we click onto with other people throughout that bit. I hope there's life after death and then sort of did like a nervous laugh. I'm okay. really intrigued by her because I think, yeah, I think that's something we all think about. Like, we're like, I yeah. hope there is a really like, oh my God, internally panicking. Yeah. So yeah, I really liked her and I was intrigued to find out or think about or make up her backstory. Okay, great. Yeah. And did you have any kind of ideas about what her backstory might be? I just sort of imagined her quite normal, like a mum with lots of kids, just sort of trying to <coughs> make her way through life. Okay. Hi, Mum. Hi, Julie. So I've got some really, really good news. Oh, what is it? You know the job that I applied for? Yeah. Well, I got it. Oh, congratulations, darling. That's yeah. amazing. Um, there's one problem. Yes, what is it? It's in New York. So far away. But what about Jessica? Well, she's gonna come with us. She'll, She'll be lonely. lonely. But you can come and visit whenever you want. But, but uh, aren't the tickets quite expensive? I'm sure we'll work something out, Mum. She loves you. Oh, darling, I'm just so happy for you. She's lonely. I'm really gonna miss you. So far away. She'll be lonely. She loves you. Can we meet again at 10 o'clock on Monday the 19th when I think we'll be in the Rose Studio, but I will confirm with you until we meet again. How long is that? Three weeks. Uh, yeah, it's basically three weeks oh, until the show, which is on the Saturday. It's be ready to work very, very hard. Yeah? Yeah. yeah but you've been absolutely fantastic. I think we've got a really great show. I'm very excited. From Hampton. I came here before six years in October 2010 in Roehampton, the whole time I'm here. And uh, at that time, uh, it was about my children, study of children, that's why that I came here. Roehampton. The council meets me here, um, from Wandsworth which is in London. I think we'll be um, quite modern, um, refreshing, because right now, you look at the window, you see estates and blocks, but once the regeneration happens, it'll be much more open. Oh, I came in here 99, 1999, yeah? And it is, I find it is very good area, you know? It's very simple, you know, like a village. So I like village life, actually. Oh, 1986, it was fantastic. Uh, no children, no teenage crowd, only the dead people. Now it's full of crowd. Rohampton. Um, I think the whole place is still nice, the greenery, the trees, and the seasons are really, you know, you can see them in Rohampton. There is still a sense of community in Rohampton. I, I moved to uh, Rohampton about 20 years ago now. Um, I, I moved there from a farm. I used to live on, on a farm um, just towards East Anglia way. Um, that was the farm I grew up on when I was just a little, little tot. Um, yeah, I moved here 20 years ago. It, it was a bit different back then. Um, there wasn't as many flowers as there was now. Um, and yeah, th th it was a bit more sort of quieter. The, I think it's because I didn't know as many people as I do now. Um, I was, it was a bit lonelier when I first moved here. Um, I missed my kids quite a lot. Um, but yeah, now it's, it's a lot better and, and I, I, I keep myself quite busy in the garden and looking at the wildlife and, and the birds. Um, yeah. Northampton. The estates and blocks. The new generation, new buildings and shopping centres, they are big plan. Hopefully they will make Rohampton safe, I don't know, hopefully. No, I conduct nothing, it's like a metropolitan. Lovely place to come and live, lovely people, very mixed community. Future is going to be very tough. I think it will look really good. I think it will be really amazing from what I hear. Social um, unrest. I don't have any fear. It may be better than now. 
maybe put Roehampton on the map. I don't think many people know about him. It will be all right. Roehampton. Meeting RT in the, um, the devising piece, mm -hmm. and it's very interesting everything that Spare Tire does. Mm -hmm. And from there, we were like, I think we all just kind of like found it interesting everything that Spare Tire yeah. does. And I, they were yeah. I think for me, like um, when she was explaining about wh what they do for people, what yeah. Spare Tire do for people, people, that's probably what made me want to do it. Yeah. I, think. I haven't been like part of like something like a big project in quite a while while I've been at mm. uni so mm. it was nice to have the opportunity to be able to be in a project yeah, that can kind of, yeah. yeah I think the idea of like the whole bring community together thing about this piece I really like yeah mm -hmm. I think yeah professional experience and kind of a more legitimate show as well as like the way that Spare Tire showed us when they kind of pitched it the effect that it has, the immediate effect that it has on communities, and uh, I thought that was quite heartwarming. And so, I wanted to be involved. I wanted to like discover how that could be so immediate. And yeah, I feel like anything that's in the public eye, whether you're doing a small piece of theatre or whether you're like a massive author or if you're like a big movie star, you have to be slightly conscious of messages you're giving to yeah. the public. Mm -hmm. You might not be having a massive um, influence, but then at the same time there can be like snowball effects where it kind of like mm -hmm. leads from like one tiny thing to one big thing. So me personally, as an artist, I would always want to be slightly aware of messages that I'm giving and hopefully trying to mm. give positive messages and trying to mm. yeah. get communities thinking about things. For me it's purely the enjoyment I would say of actually just putting on the piece. Yeah. I feel like I don't... Yeah. Uh, it, as long as it isn't extremely offensive, the political oh, yeah. mm. message that I'm showing, I'm kind of quite blind to it, I would feel. It's just something that I want to do. I think in some way all art that we create is political in some way like mm -hmm. it's always should I think to make it interesting and effective and like to help it affect people it should focus on some sort of issue mm -hmm. or some sort of thing that's mm -hmm. going on in the world that people can like relate, relate to, to or understand mm -hmm. as like an issue and then the piece will like explore that. I think um, the young adults of today have we've got more of a voice than we've ever had before and there's so many new forms of kind of expression, political mm -hmm. expression, you know, if you look at social media and the way that's changed in the last 10 years, and art, using art um, to express ourselves is, has become recognised, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of um, artists have, you know, put messages out there that aren't really ignored anymore. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important, you know, for us. I think it's really brought it home, you know, how much this, how important it is, um, the, you know, the, the way in the last few decades, the council tower blocks, um, you know, we've, we've seen the consequences of regeneration. Yeah. And... So, or know, rather not re, like not... Like not regeneration that's not been done properly. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it's been absolutely devastating um, and I think it's created, you know, it's put that message out there that there is a big divide um, in classes and between the government and the working class and the people that live on council estates. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, you know, these are people's lives and we need to, you know, we need to put that out there. Thank you to Spare Tire for giving us the yes, thank you. foundation of incredible like 
and, and, and the inspiration and the source material yeah. and the, just the smiling faces and the kind of positive energy to be like, you can make this, we can do a show. Mm-hmm. It's been great. That, yeah, it has been such a good experience. Looking forward to it. Experience. And the university as well. Uh, they've, they've galvanized both the company and us. Northampton, 